Hello everyone, this is Marcy with Creators Call Shop here on YouTube and Creators Call on Etsy. I'd like to welcome you back to the next installment of my series I'm calling Currently Creating and I'm working on some journals for fall. This is part number five that you're going to be watching here today and so far we've been working primarily on this one that's the ring binder and I'm hoping to get a good portion of it wrapped up today for you and then we can move on to the other ones. I don't want the series to drag on and on because as I've scheduled it out this is going to go clear on into um, end of November, 1st of December and then you won't be able to see my Christmas ones that I want to work on. So if you are getting bored please just say so and then I can always just post the wrap up you will have already seen the flip through because I'm trying to film these so that I can have the flip through ready here at the beginning of uh, November but then showing you the process after the fact if that makes sense so anyway let's go ahead and get started so before we can do that I need you to get comfy get yourself a drink your favorite uh, snack and meet me right back here at the craft table after this. Welcome back. Is everybody settled in? Like I said, today is part number five in this series, and I'll show you very quickly what we did last time. We worked on, um, I was trying to make pockets and ephemera, and I did not get nearly as much done as I had wanted to, but we got a ways, and then I worked quite a bit off camera so that we can keep moving forward. So last time we, made this belly band and I've decided not to sew around it. I think it'll be just fine the way it is. I may still decide to add some trim or something right here to cover up where it says St. Jude's but maybe not. You know it is a junk journal and that's part of the mystique and the charm. Then we made these four pockets and um, I do not have tags to go in those yet so we will be working on those. I'll probably be doing those off camera as well, just in the interest of time. But today we're going to try to embellish and put as many of these things in the journal as we can and maybe mark some notes where we'd like to do some more things. We made this tag off camera, I mean on camera last time. I think that turned out really cute. So I added this ribbon, the Happy Harvest ribbon. Then we made we started to make both of these paper clips, altered paper clips, and we got this one, and as you know, it gave me a little bit of a difficulty, and um, I finished up this one off camera as well. So in addition to that, I made myself, I made myself, no I didn't, I made a <laughs> little booklet to go in a pocket somewhere along the line. And I've taken some of the scraps and I made a few tags, and then I took, some more scraps and then some of those pieces that I had cut out on camera last time and made a couple of journal cards. I was hope I'm trying to do some that can go sideways and I suppose in terms of the orientation of the image, I didn't really achieve my goal, <laughs> but that's okay. I just need some that can slide into a pocket if I want them to. Then I made this out of that book page that was a kind of torn up and um, I think it turned out pretty cute. It's a little bit of a different style for me, and I, th I think it turned out all right. I made one of these flips, known as the Rita Donnelly flip, and um, that will be getting put in somewhere. And then these three pockets I made, this one actually is gonna go this way, and then things will slide into it this, this direction. But these are based on the series by Dee Dee Farrago, and it's called Don't Freak Out Before Christmas. She's been doing a challenge all the way through 
August. It started in August. It's going all the way through October, and I don't know when it ends, but I'm not doing the challenge, but I did like some of the things that I saw Gail Agustinelli making, and she is participating in the challenge, so I went back to check that out, and then I just kind of went off of Dee Dee's ideas and retrofitted these to fit this journal, so they're not exact, but close enough. Then I took some more scraps. These were the two tags I cut on camera last time, and I still haven't figured out quite how I want to decorate them. This one I turned into a Hermelinda tag, and I will be decorating that up a little bit more along the way, but it's just the base, and then I just made an extra journal card out of one of the scraps, so... You know, we got lots of things to play with, but it's probably gonna, it's gonna need a lot more. <laughs> then I have this tag. I think I may have shown you this way back in the very first episode, and I had made this a couple years ago when I first made that first initial journal. And so I was looking at it, and I decided that this cute ribbon, I added some here, and then I put some on as a topper, and I think that's exactly what it needed. It just gave it that final finished touch. And then today I've been doing some sewing projects. And so I'll show you what I did. This has taken me quite some time. I made one of these snippet rolls. And what, um, it, this is only my second time trying to do this. But I was using up, trying to use up some more of those patches and scraps. It looks like I need to tack this down here. And then I got out buttons and trims, you know, rick rack. And I did use a little bit of ribbon, even though this is a boy-based journal. But I'm thinking I'm going to try to use this as a belly band, either a vertical or a horizontal one, depending on how it goes. And then I made these three pockets. They're pretty simple. I mean, it's just backed on a piece of plain card stock. And then I just used some of those pre-cut pieces that I had thrifted. And then I also added little patches to go with our pumpkin patches theme. And then just gave them a little embellishment here even though these are Thanksgiving themed happy Thanksgiving ready set eat eat drink and give thanks because this goes September through November I think these will still tie in just fine even though we're talking about pumpkins <laughs> and then I made a couple of fabric flips and so this one these are my hidden pocket fabric flips and I did a couple of different ways I will link that up above in the cards that uh, video so you can go back and check out how I made these but it's my spin on the basic fabric flip that we like to do and essentially back here there's a hidden pocket on the back and then these two I did something a little bit extra on this one I made a second little tiny pocket like a shirt pocket on the front and it's just big enough to put in a couple of tickets so this could be like the tickets that the little boys have to use the boys on these pockets. Maybe this is their ticket to get into the pumpkin patch and they're keeping it in their pocket to stay to stay safe, you know? So here's this one. It's got a wrinkle. Oop. And then on this one, I have a straight fabric piece on the back. I did not fold it up to make the pocket, but what I did instead is I made a little hidden pocket under here. It's kind of puckering, unfortunately. There's something going on with my tension on my machine and I really need to go get it just serviced. It's never been serviced at all. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's old. It's from 1983, you do the math. It's really old. <laughs> but it's a tank, it does basic sewing and it's been dependable and I love it. So anyway. I put a little shirt pocket back here, which reminds me, I wanted to put a button on there. So let's just, will that one work? Let's do that right now. And I'm afraid I'm gonna have to thread it up. I don't wanna waste time doing this, but I like cohesiveness in my journal, so yellow maybe? Let's see who's got the longest thread. I really, and being lazy and trying to avoid re-threading re -threading my needles. And um, I don't know if I am going to be successful or not. <laughs> I may still have to do it. So let's um, do this real quick. I'm gonna say, sometimes I watch people sit there and fiddle with trying to stuff their threads through the, through the buttonholes. And I wonder why on earth don't you just 
thread your needle it's actually 20 times faster but look at that look how fast I just shoved it through the holes there there we go now normally I might use a thicker twine or something but I wanted these all to lay pretty flat so I just doubled up my thread and I usually will do two or three passes through the buttonholes each direction but in the interest of time right now I'm just doing one so there's that you always want to keep a little thread on the end of your needle I usually have a longer piece and I knot it so it doesn't fall inside my pin cushion and I'll go back and do that later and some glue and yeah that'll make this look really cute come on this is a little crooked and it got a little bit puckered but because it's a junk journal life will go on and honestly you're going to be putting things in here you might want the extra space anyway so we'll pretend like we meant to do that here we go there's his shirt button his pocket button that's cute okay so this is what we have to work with so we're just going to go through the journal and I forgot to start my timer so I will start my timer and I will just go through the pages and we'll just figure out where we want to place things and it, this is where I'm going to be speeding up the video so that we can get as much done as possible now this tag I'm gonna leave out because even though it's a tag I also was kind of thinking it might, instead of being put into a pocket, it may become a side pocket in and of itself, and then I'll stuff other things. So I'm going to leave it out. I'm not saying that's what I am going to do, but we will see. I'm going to grab my fabric scissors so I can, I can cut my belly band here. Okay, enough talking, and let's get down to it. Here we go. First things first, I'm going to start out with the pockets that have the little boys in the corn maze. And I'm trying to remember which dictionary page I put in each section because that's kind of how I want to match those pictures. However, the one where the little boy is smiling at the end, I know I want that in the third signature. So this is the signature that had the scarecrow dictionary page. So that one's gonna go there. And second signature had the dictionary page with corn, so that'll go there in the second signature. Now I'm just looking for a good place to put it. And what I look for, we're wanting to cover up either white blank space or unwanted space on the backs of pages or whatever. Any, any place really that you just want to cover up. At the same time, I still want there to be writing space, or if you want to use it as an album, that you would have space to put an album. So that one I was kind of flipping back and forth between a few pages, but I picked this one because the red in the little, or it's kind of an off red burgundy right there in the scarecrow's scarf matches the burgundy on the page. So that's how I came to my final decision. It was very scientific. Now we're going to go to the second signature and find a place for the next pocket. And there's corn, and so I'm using the one with the corn stalks. I like how that looks with the colors in that picture, so that's a possibility. I could cover up that page where it talks about Mr. Lincoln, but I decide not to. It doesn't really do anything on that page. It doesn't pop. I kind of like how it looks right here on the blue, so that's a possibility as well, but I think, ooh, we want to cover up those snakes. I forgot to do that. Oh dear, we have to go back and do that. I do like how it looks on the stripes too, so now I have to decide, do I want it on the page with the stripes or the one where it's opposite the beautiful farm sunset? Now I'm at the end of the signature, so I have to make a decision. Boy, deliberating. And I decide to go for it and put it on this page here with the stripes. And then I decide to put it on this page instead. <laughs> I don't know. What was I thinking? I don't know. 
Anyhow, I, I think I wanted to save the page with the stripes for something more or bigger, like maybe a belly band or something. So here's where it is. I do like how the oranges and yellows all tie together. I'm trying to make sure that's straight. One thing I'm learning with that art glitter glue. Oh, now we're going to go to the third signature. Little boy's happy, so he goes in the third signature at the end of the journal. Uh, art glitter, the art glitter glue sticks very quickly. So you want to make sure you have your piece right where it needs to be because it's a very fast grab glue and there's no turning back. So get everything. <laughs> I have to always check myself to make sure I've got everything on straight. I'm just thumbing back and forth here. I do like how the blues and greens play against each other on both those pages, the pocket and then the opposite page. And I discover very quickly that there aren't very many pages in the third signature that are heavy. And that's one of the other things I look for is something to support the weight of pockets and belly bands and things once they're full, because they will be heavy, heavier just because of how much stuff gets put in them and the amount of use. So I like to put them on a thicker, stronger page. Okay, that one's gonna go back in the journal thinking about that pocket but I'm gonna wait for a minute then I'm gonna grab out these three pockets and now I'm gonna kind of work from back signature to front signature and again remembering I don't have too many strong pages in the third signature that's a possibility because I do want to cover up that lady making apples I like the picture on the front but the back page not so much that's a possibility. It's not really doing much for me. And uh, no, I don't really want to cover up the recipe there. Uh, just not a lot of choices here. Now here's this one, this pretty orange paper, and that works really well. So I'm going to start gluing it down. I'm always double checking myself to see which way is up and down and I want to make it as a side pocket as well. So I'm going to glue it onto the page so it can be a side loading pocket as well as have the three spots on the front where it's, a well the two spots, the angled pocket and the small pocket on the front. So just getting a little more mileage out of it. Now going to the middle signature, I know that I want that square pocket in the middle signature. And I do like how it looks kind of on those colors, but unfortunately, the way it loads, it can't go up against those rings. It has to be on a page, on a left-hand page and not a right-hand page, if that makes sense. The square page would be nice, but I don't know if I want to cover up those cute faces. There's the stripes again. Hmm, looks pretty good. Now I'm kind of going off on a tangent, taking a, taking a side turn in my creative process here. <laughs> and I'm thinking about putting a pocket right there to one of the other pockets on that page with the faces. I'm gonna try this one out on Sammy the Scarecrow. I do like that it says Sammy Scarecrow. And one of the fabric pockets winds up there. So I clip it in place so I can come back and fix that later. But I'm still looking, where do I want to put this one? That one's a possibility too, because it's a very blank white page and it's square. But I really like how it looks on those colored stripes. So that's where it's gonna go. And actually, I think that was the best decision and I'm also very glad I did not glue the first pocket there. And I just like how all the colors play off each other and then you have a narrow stripe and then the bold design of the text on that paper. And I position it a little bit higher up on the page since it is a short pocket, essentially it's gonna load from the side. That gives me some space at the bottom. So I grab some labels very quickly and then I just put a label in that empty space so the new owner can label whatever they're doing or whatever's in those pockets. And that leaves us this third tall pocket to go in the first signature and I'm just playing around that was really awful so <laughs> that was a no I actually laughed when I put it on there I don't you know you got to try out all the different ideas that's a possibility 
across from Cute Boy. And that one's now, those colors back there just on that page, you're gonna have to just have the right thing or else it won't work. Kind of like it across from that, yep, except for the big bold print on the front and the big bold print on the pocket, it's too much of the same print in the same place. So I decided I'd go back and put it by Happy Boy with his basket. And then while I'm sitting there figuring out how to position it, I decide, ooh, I could make this a flip or a tip in. So now I've got to find what, how am I gonna attach this? I'm pulling out some of the fabric strips, or not fabric, some of the long paper strips from when we trimmed down the pages and there aren't very many long enough left. So the gray wins pretty much by default because it's going to be strong enough and it's long enough now I'm just measuring it up. I'm gonna mark this and then I'm gonna trim it off. I've got my paper trimmer off to the side today, so that's been kind of handy. It's just like on a little cart right next to me, so that's helpful. And then I'm too lazy to get my bone folder, walk across the room to get that out, so I'm just pressing the fold with the edge of my uh, pinking shears. However, that backfires on me a bit because those corners are rounded and I want the, the um, hinge to have rounded corners. So now I have to get up anyway. Get my corner rounder and my good paper scissors and the bone folder for the next thing I have to crease. <laughs> and now I'm trying to make sure that the color, you know, that I get this glued on the right way so that the pattern is what shows when you open the tip in and we're ready to go. I'm probably over gluing here, but since nothing oozed out, I guess it's fine. And I'm turning it to the side so I can see to line up the curves, those, those rounded corners. There we go. And then double checking myself which way is up so that I glue it onto the page right side up. glitter glue and now I'm just making sure the page is square before I lay it on there so that everything's straight yay and it looks nice I like it yay success going back into the binder now I'm gonna try the fabric pockets here and we're gonna I think I know where I want one of them so we're gonna try to figure out what to do with the other two now I did kind of like the idea of that being on the green, but that particular piece of cardstock is not wide enough, so my pocket can't fit there. And I know I want to cover up the little match girl. I'm trying to cover up the text and keep the other side of the page with the recipe. But just in case there's a better spot, <laughs> I'm still looking. Yeah, it's not going to work on the back of that page either. So, so far, Little Match Girl is the best choice. Yeah, not too many options. Now, I know I want it there, but I also still want to cover up the rest of the words on that page. So now I'm just going to try to find some scrap pieces of paper, or a scrap piece of paper, and figure out what I want in the back. That will cover up the text. And I don't have a lot of paper pieces left. Now, from the camera up here, I'm trying to see how that would look once I trim it down. From up here, it doesn't look too bad, but from close up, I wasn't really liking it. And so I pick out the blue and that's what I'm gonna go with. Finding my pencil <laughs> and marking it. And I'm marking the full width of the pocket, not just the cardstock, but from edge to edge because that fabric is a little wider than the cardstock and that way it will line up on the page evenly with the pocket. It'll be a visual, it'll be lined up visually I guess is how you would say that. And I'm putting some glue stick in the middle so it gets good adhesion in the middle but then I'm making sure that the edges seal really well with the art glitter glue. down, lining it up. Excuse my head, it's not easy being myopic. I apologize. 
Now I'm going to go back and punch out that hole there. It's partially covered. I will punch that out later. And gluing my pocket. I'm always, like I said, constantly checking to make sure I've got it right side up and I'm gluing the correct edges. Yeah, I like that. That works. That goes back in the binder. Now we're going to go to where that one was clipped in, but just in case, I want to try and see how it looks with the plain denim pocket. And I really think I like that better. Just something about the simplicity of the plain denim. And it brings out that image along the top of the page. It just works better, I think. And this turns out to be a good decision in a minute. You will see why. Kind of nice to have these slightly smaller pockets that fit on the square pages. So in signature three, um, oops, I got that. That kind of got glued to the other page. It didn't. It doesn't look terrible. I fixed it, but it had a little boo boo. Um, I definitely want to cover up that as well. And this pocket actually ends up being a better match for the colors on this page. So I'm glad I changed my mind on the other location. And then once I glue it down, I realize there's actually an image. See, there's an image of like a little girl in a chair, which I didn't even notice because of the other stuff that was printed on the page. So now I'm taking a look, what do I have? I'm kind of putting the two fabric flips and the other paper flip together, and then the belly bands together, and then that pocket could potentially be a belly band, we'll see. So now I'm looking for a place for the first fabric flip. I'm going from the third signature forward now, back to front. And then I remembered there's a little spot there that I wanted to glue down, so I take advantage of the moment and glue it down. So now I'm going to see which one looks better there, and I really can't decide. That one or this one. I don't know. So I grab out a notepad because I know I'm going to put writing space under it and I'm checking to see how it looks maybe with the with the blank page under it but that really doesn't help once it's all covered up that doesn't really give me any better idea so I'm going to trim these down first because I kind of know what size they need to be for the page they're a little long I'm going to trim those down and before I can decide for sure, I think I'm going to go to the front signature. I'm not, I don't think. I know. <laughs> I decide to go to the first signature and see where I might decide to place the other fabric flip. So for, right, for the moment now, I'm just going to clip this in there. And then I'm going to try out the other one in the first signature, find a good spot for it. And then that might help me make my decision on which one looks better where. And then I know I want to put the, the paper flip in the middle signature. So this is the perfect thing to cover up the back of that page with the windmill. I'm going to try them both out. And I really like how that looks there. So that, that uh, fabric flip will go there. And then I run over, grab my, uh, my tape. Running runner's tape, what's it called now? I've forgotten the name anyway, and realize it's out of tape. <laughs> so I had to go refill that really quick, and now it's working just fine. I'm gonna lay this down. This is a good solution, it's stronger and more durable than using glue stick, but it will let the page lay flat and it won't pucker like using glue. Gonna get out the Fabrifix and use that along the top. I'm waiting here for the glue to get down into the tip <laughs> so I can glue with it. There we go. And that, for some reason, that just works. It all comes together. It looks really nice. And I'm pleased with that. So that's gonna go back in the binder. 
Then we'll go back to the third signature where I want the other fabric flip. Pulling out this page. And hold just a moment because I have an idea. And my idea was, since there are two sheets, I decided to staple them together. You could do anything. I suppose you could um, just use washi tape and tape both of them to the page, which I've done before, or you could make a hinge out of paper or fabric and then glue it down. But I like the staples and it's pretty quick and easy using the tape runner and the staples here. Still waiting for the glue. There we go. good on that page too and it covers up the pictures on the back that just weren't really doing anything so that looks good hooray victory success <laughs> and now I'm showing you so it's starting to get kind of thick it's not terrible but there's still room to negotiate but we don't want it to get over full because we want the the actual journal owner to be able to play with it and add things to it I'm going to I get ready to glue that down and then I thought well maybe I should put that pocket here because of the pumpkins and the pumpkins but then I thought well maybe that pocket goes better somewhere else so I decided to stick with the Rita Donnelly flip here Rita Donnelly is a youtuber that kind of came up with this concept and her name of her channel now is grandma Rees R-E-E-Z scrap shack I don't know how much she still does YouTube I don't really watch her channel that much, <laughs> but I know who she is and I've, she's been around in the junk journal world for a long time. Now I'm gonna try that out over there and I really still kind of like the idea of using it as a belly band. So I'm trying to figure out what I could back it on that might allow it to be a belly band on the page and I'm going through my scraps, but I'm just, nothing's really going to work, I'm afraid. So that one's too wide. And this one's, if I trim it down, this one's too narrow. And I don't really like those polka dots on the crosshatch pattern. I do like the colors on the pocket next to that recipe. This is a possibility, maybe, but it's just not thrilling my heart. So we're going to go with it as it is. And then the same kind of idea, I'm gonna place it up just a little bit higher on the page so that the bulk is distributed in this journal between the top and the bottom. And again, we're gonna add a label so that you can label what's in the pocket or what activities were being done that day or what have you. I really like those labels. Those are from Walmart. They look kind of retro, but they're very modern. Retro inspired labels. And they're only like a buck 97, so it's worth it. Okay, I'm going to try to figure out where to place the, the belly band, the, the paper one. And of course I had already pre-cut it to fit a full size page. That page won't work. I don't like the, how it looks on there and it's not strong enough anyway. This page maybe, I do like kind of the homestead scene behind the country images on those seed packets there. but. Still not 100% for sure. I kind of like it there, but it, it is an option opposite the fall autumn harvest there. But I also liked what the verse had to say and I didn't really want to cover up the verse. Now, next to the windmill, let's see, or do we like it covering up the words? But I don't want to cover up the words. I like it there and it's covering up the white space. So that's where it's going to live. giving a little glue along the top and bottom edges. And I'm placing it so, so that it kind of, the bottom, the bottom faces the outside edge, I guess is how I would say that. And then I thought it might be cute to add a piece of fabric, but not that one, no. I want to add a different one. Do I want this one? No, I do not. I want this one, okay. 
And since I'm liking the idea of the staples, hold on, I need to go grab my stapler. <laughs> and I run grab my stapler real quick. And here we go. We're going to staple it in place. And we're out of staples. Yes, indeed. So now I have to go refill my stapler. But once that's all done, it looks really cute. Yay! Back into the binder that page goes. I do like that with that little fabric swatch on there. I'm getting kind of gluey, so we're going to clean that. Clean that up. Clean me up. Now I'm going to look for a place for the fabric, uh, the snippet roll belly band and I know I do not want it in the third signature at all because there aren't enough pages that would be able to support it so now we got to find one in the second signature that will maybe I want it short maybe I want to cover that one up but not really now this page I knew I wanted to cover it up but it's not strong enough to support the belly band so we're going to go off on a side tangent for a moment here and cover that up and I would use the polka dot side, but I think it'll be easier to write on the plain green side. So I'm marking it and trimming it. Now I'm gonna round the corner so it looks pretty. Taking the page out so I can glue it properly and then using the tape runner again. I am a messy tape runner operator. There was a time in my life when these things confused the heck out of me and I could not use them to save my life. So I've definitely improved. <laughs> I guess a nine year hiatus from scrapbooking must have helped with that. <laughs> I became proficient. Now I'm showing you here that this is the branding strip from one of those pieces of paper. It's from the Authentique. And I also liked the quote that was on it. So we're gonna take that little piece that I had trimmed off and a scrap of the wallpaper and we're going to make an embellishment for the top of this page and if you cover up those flowers at the bottom we don't want any frou-frou girly flowers in our cute little boy journal no but if you cover those over and lay the lay the quote on top of it that little decorative element looks like a rope looks like a piece of rope which looks kind of farmish so that's what we're doing here. I'm tearing this down and inking everything up. We're gonna cover the flowers with the, with the quote. And then it's just gonna look like a, like a piece of farm something. <laughs> farm embellishment, I guess. However, it's still a little too tall at the top. So we gotta do some more tearing, some more inking, get it to fit. That's just the right size. So now we're ready to glue everything. But you know, these are the little things. I, I really like to try to use up all the pieces that I have that I get out for a project and use them all up within that project. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. It's kind of a little challenge. You don't have to, but it, it also helps all the elements within the journal to fit together and to go together. There it is, happiness. Okay, moving on to what we were trying to do in the first place, which is find a place for that snippet roll. Oh, and then I remembered I had that little quote pumpkin head, so I'm going to clip that in place. Also, I'm too lazy to get my paper clips out, so I'm using my sewing clips. <laughs> Obviously, the, um, it's not working for me because I've had to hop up several times to get things. Now, I do want this on the back, kind of covering those clouds. I kind of like how that looks, all the color and happiness and whimsical, whimsical feeling. So I'm trimming it to fit. I'm going to cut off some of these that are just overhanging and then I'm just looking at the placement those little embellishments I put on that had words definitely need to face to the outside of the page so I thought I might put it on one way and now I'm thinking well would that work as as a side pocket instead no it did not it did not look good and I turn it that way because I want those words to face the outside edge of the page not the inside edge it just to me it just looks better visually Here we go. Once I put some journal cards and things in there, that's also going to cover a lot of that pattern on the page, so it won't look nearly as busy as it does right now. Got to clean all the glue globs off. And placement. Yep, more 
above my head. There we go. Yeah, I've got glue on my fingers. I'm trying to get it off there. Making sure it's all lined up straight. I'm very happy with that. And then I'm noticing that those holes need reinforcement. And I had put my hole reinforcers away trying to tidy up, but I had to run and grab them again, get them out. And so I give that page a little extra reinforcement. And then this one I decided since it's going to get a lot of use, now that it has a belly band on the back side, normally I would not put a hole reinforcer on a heavy page like this, but because it's gonna get extra use due to the fact that it's got it's going to have tags and things and it's gonna get things um, you know, you're going to be sliding things in and out with the belly band. Then I just gave it some extra reinforcement. And then I still need to glue a couple spots in place that are a little loose so they don't, so it just lays better in the book. There we go. Now it's ready to go. And then of course the glue got all over, kind of. <laughs> So I have to wipe up some of the extra glue that got out of line. There we go. Now, is there anything else I need to do? I'm gonna try to add in these two altered paper clips and I'm having trouble because it just didn't wanna go on, but that looks cute. And then this one is gonna go on one of the other pages where I have a flap, just because when I start adding things in there, it's gonna be useful to have that flap in place. So that, that's what we've got. I think I've used all my elements. All right, guys, this is really all the time I should take today with this um, as far as filming it. I'm going to go through still and do some stamping on some of the pages and I may still cover up a few things. Um, yeah, like see here, I like to stamp where there's this background. We had a little bit of our snippet strip left over so that will definitely be decorating a page like see so it could go on something like this and be a tuck or whatever um for now i think this is still going to stay a tag and then i'll probably be making a few more embellishments like clusters and things <laughs> i kept running out of stuff i ran out of the um, staples and i ran out of the crafters tape the um, tape runner and I had to hop, hop up and down for a few things, which ate up a little bit of our time, but that's just the way it is when you're crafting. So that's it for today. And let me grab what we're going to read. I hope you guys are really getting benefit and value out of this. So if you are liking these videos, please remember to give them a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. That will let you know every time that I upload something new and it'll put me in your feed. And every time that I'm on or have something going on, you can hit the notification bell and it will definitely tell you as soon as I've got something brand new out there. Um, what else was I gonna say? Boy, I went blank. Okay, anyway, yeah, that's it. <laughs> do all those great things. <laughs> so I, I do hope that you're getting some good out of this series. Oh, one of the other things I was gonna mention, um, you saw me staple that little fabric strip to the top of the one belly band, and I do like to go through and embellish pages with little fabric, pieces of fabric. I'd hope to be able to kind of identify those today and at least clip them in so I could go back to, um, to fix them in. Normally I like to sew them, but I think for this particular journal, I'm really liking the effect of the staples. So I'm gonna stick with the staples. I think that'll be fun and plus it's a whole lot quicker. Don't have to drag out the machine again for that. So today let's read once more from our Autumn Ideals. You're gonna be seeing this, I think, the day before Thanksgiving. So let's read this one here. This is called The Heart Leads Home. Oh no, it's called The Calling of Home by Mamie Osborne Odom. The heart leads home on Thanksgiving, no matter how far you may roam. Nostalgic memories overwhelm us with a calling, calling for home. We hear whispers from the hillsides, from every leaf and tree. The old homestead is calling. Loved ones are waiting for me. I dream in sweet remembering, give thanks in a special way, 
greetings will be overflowing on this coming Thanksgiving day. I want to encourage you all, as I know that, of course, 2020, we're all involved in all the changes that COVID has brought. And there are a lot of people who won't be able to get together for Thanksgiving. You know, we've all given up a lot this year, birthday parties and graduations and weddings and even funerals because of it. Sorry. <laughs> I just kind of got overcome there for a moment. I just want to encourage you all to stay with it and to not focus on what you've lost, but to focus on what you have. And I can't think of a better time to think about that and focus on these things than on Thanksgiving. So I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and a joyful holiday season, a warm celebration, whether it's just you with your immediately immediate family or maybe you live alone and you can't see anyone, zoom in, Skype, you know, um, FaceTime, do whatever you need to do to connect with those people because even though you can't see them face to face, you can still have your family time and still interact and still be grateful for what we do have. I'm sorry, I'm getting all choked up, I apologize. Until next time, I hope that you will be inspired and do something creative today. I'll catch you in the video next week. Bye-bye.